Hey guys, before we start the video, I want to quickly announce the Angle Cooler giveaway winner. Thank you to everyone who entered, and a big congrats to our winner, Will Dodds. Please send me an email so we can get your cooler sent out to you. Now, let's get on with the video. Hey guys, what's going on? This is the first trip back in the boat since we replaced the fuel tank, and it is actually Thanksgiving morning. I got Fisher with me, I got Victor, and my dad back there, and we're going lobstering this morning. It's like 72 degrees air temp, and the water temp is 76. Which so, is cold for us. Cold. Which is cold for us. It's actually warmer in the water, so it's gonna suck when we get out of the water today, but hopefully we catch some lobsters. Wish us luck, I'll see you under the water. So we went to the first spot and there was probably at least five lobsters there. And like I was saying, we always go for the biggest one first. And once you figure out how big that one is, if it's not legal, then you might as well not even bother trying to catch the rest. So we caught that one small one and then realized the rest were gonna be pretty small. So we left them all alone. And then we ended up catching one legal one at that spot. And then I just towed my dad and Victor to the second spot. And I guess there's two lobsters down there that they're working on right now. It's a small rock, so they they don't need any tools. They don't need the tickle stick or the net. They're just using their hands to go down there and try to grab it. Did you get it? I had him by, I had him by the antennas, but I didn't want to break him. No, I had mine by the knuckle, but he's in there good. That's a deep rock. There's two of them. Yeah, there's one big one and one little one. I had I had him by the antennas, but I couldn't quite get a knuckle. I think if we work at it, we can get him. You guys are probably like, you're such babies, it's not that cold, but growing up in Florida, living in Florida your whole life, this is cold to us, you know? We don't get really cold weather, and when this water cools down, you can really feel it. <laughs> All right, so it looks like Victor got a keeper. Did you measure it? No, you gotta measure it. There's the one more. Oh, I guess you don't have a measurer, do you? He's legal, number two, going in the cooler. Check out how calm and clear it is. We're in 18 feet of water, and you can literally see the bottom perfectly. You found one? Oh yeah, this is a big one looking at me. You want you to tickle it out and I'll net it? Okay. Brooke, can I have the net? It's so clear, you can literally see them on the bottom. Yeah, that's a big boy. Got him. That's a big boy. Don't have to gauge that one. Wow, that's a big boy. That's one of the biggest ones we've got in a while, huh? Yeah, this is a good one. He was just sticking out looking at me. Nice one. Holy smokes. Yeah. <laughs> he was crawled up that net. That's he a big one. Easy to tickle, easy to get. He's very easy to get. 
Here you he, go. He wanted to be caught. Yeah, this one is one of the bigger lobsters we've caught in a long time. Yep. Yeah. Two lobsters just caught one. He's legal. He's going home with us. Perk's going down. That means that they got him. That was good. Did you get him? Yeah. I was like, he looks kind of small. <laughs> he does look small. And then I was like, oh, maybe he doesn't. And then I was like, he's kind of small. And then I was like, I'll just catch him just in case. <laughs> he's small. Is he? Red grouper down here. take a one out to me and it went right like right into his hands and he just went and grabbed it. I don't see the other one. Want me to measure it? Yeah. I got a lot going on. I don't think he's legal. Yeah, let me get this over here. Thank you. He looks small. Yeah. Barely. Barely. Oh, is. Legal? No. no, barely small. No.
Ooh, I've seen under a rock in a really long time. They just go deep in. There's probably 10. There's probably at least 10 lobsters under this rock. It just went on and on and on in there. Absolutely crazy. This one's legal for sure. There's definitely a lot of small ones, but there's some big ones under there, so hopefully we can catch a couple more. My uh, dive buddy's getting a little cold, so we'll see. <laughs> I don't think I need to. Whoa. Whoa. It's kind of hard to film. I use the GoPro on my wrist. And especially in a situation like this where you have so many lobsters coming out everywhere, I try to catch them more than film them. <laughs> so I don't know how good my footage is gonna be, but there's lobsters shooting out all over this rock. I'm telling you, the craziest rock I've seen and I don't know. They're just stacked, layers and layers and layers of lobsters. You can just stick the tickle stick in and kick them out, it's crazy.
did another big one. Monster fire! Well, we ended up catching 11. That last spot, there was a ton of shorts. And check out this jumbo that my dad caught. I think at like the second spot or something. Look at this thing. Huge. That's the biggest we've caught in a while. And this is a, uh, it's legal, but it's just so much smaller than this. Look at that. Crazy. The limit is six per person. So we could have kept 24. But one, we didn't need our limit, and two, we couldn't find our limit anyways. <laughs> and it's also cold, so we're done for the day. But that last spot, Fisher, sure, what do you think? The most lobsters you've seen in a long time? I mean, I was so cold, and I wanted to get out, but I, I've never seen that before. You went under it, and it was just the entire line of the rock would just fall. And it was so the, thick small, into. the smaller lobsters, and then behind them, you could see the big ones pushing them out. Crazy, so many. And all the rocks around too. There were three here, four there, three here, and so many that were, I'm talking like this big from being legal. Like you give them another month, let them grow a little bit more, and there's gonna be a lot of legal lobsters out here. Well then it's gonna even be, be even colder. We're like shivering, our oh, teeth yeah. are chattering. <laughs> Good job. So I try filming lobsters and fish underwater, but I don't have bottom time like Fisher does. Fisher can hold his breath for so long, it's absolutely incredible. Sometimes he'll go down there and start tickling out a lobster, and I'll dive down to, to net it, and he'll be working on it, and I'll have to come back up to the surface, get air, and go back down again by the time that he's ready with the lobster out. Absolutely incredible. He's gonna make a video out of today too, so make sure you guys check that out. I will have it linked down in the description. And it's Fisher Chris on YouTube if you guys want to check them out. Let's get in the sun. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to the kitchen. Now it's been a few days since we went diving and today is actually my dad's birthday. So I'm going to be cooking up some lobsters tonight for dinner. And I'm also going to be making a duck appetizer, which I'm going to have in a separate video. So if you guys haven't watched that video yet, I will have that link down below where we went duck hunting and I made jalapeno poppers. So I'm cooking up eight tails tonight. I have eight people. And right now, I'm prepping them for the grill. Now, I'm not cooking at my house tonight. I'm gonna go to my parents because Victor and I don't have a grill yet. So what I'm doing is I have my lobster tail, and these have been frozen, and then I defrosted them today. And I'm taking a knife and cutting down the bottom side of the lobster. Now, some people do this with a pair of scissors. I've always done it with a knife, and it works great for me. If you want to do it with a pair of scissors, go ahead. And then I take the palm of my hand and press down and it cracks the shell. So now that the shell is cracked, you're going to be able to take the lobster and peel it right out of the shell. So now the reason I do this is because one, they're a little easier to get out of the shell before you cook them. It just makes it a lot easier than when people are trying to peel that cooked lobster out of the shell. I do cook it in the shell sometimes, but I also like to take it out of the shell. Now, another thing is lobsters molt. And as they're molting, they're growing a new shell inside of their shell. And so the thing about Florida lobsters is sometimes you'll get a really tough, chewy one, and that's because they're in their process of molting, and that skin on the outside is getting tougher as it's growing. So sometimes you'll get one that had just molted and you don't have that tough skin, and sometimes you'll get one that just about to molt, and that skin can be super tough. And you'll be sitting at a table with people, and someone will get a really tough one, and that's because it was probably about to molt. And you'll never know unless you cut them open like this, and I'll show you a couple to compare them to show you what the difference of them. And then also when you do it like this, you can get out any gunk. Sometimes there's gunk from when you clean out their digestive tract, which you wouldn't be able to get if you didn't do this. So I just cut the bottom. Now crack it with the palm of my hand. It doesn't hurt, it's actually pretty easy. You just gotta get the right pressure on it to crack it open. And then just peel that baby out of the shell. This one has so much sand inside of it. Let me see if I can come up and show you. You see all that? 
If I didn't crack open the shell, you'd be eating that. It's sand and just things that they eat. It's their poop and sometimes you get some of it left in there. Look at this tail. <laughs> Freaking giant. It's like the size of my head. It's like the lobster's going to the chiropractor. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> His final adjustment. That's exactly what it's like. Okay. Don't tell me Brooke used a pair of scissors, it's easier because that wasn't actually that hard. But this is way more fun. Look at that. This is the one my dad caught. See what I'm talking about? That's what you'd be eating if I didn't take it out of the shell. Look at that. Gross. This, this one's probably the furthest away from molting. Maybe it just molted or something. Look at that compared to this. This one's not gonna be that chewy, but this one, this one's gonna be chewy. So now to prevent that chewiness, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fillet it kind of like a fish. I'm gonna separate it into two different parts and it's basically like skin. So I'm just filleting it off of its skin. Now we got that beautiful white meat, all the important stuff. And let me get this other side off and then I'll show you the skin I'm talking about. Just like you're flying a fish. Just like you're flying the skin off of a fish. This is so rubbery, you have no idea. Look at that. And this is what you're eating which makes people not like Florida lobster because it's so chewy. And that's because they're molting. And it's really not that much meat you're missing. No, it's, it's just the skin. You don't eat the skin on all the fish that you catch. Yeah, you can eat the skin on some fish, but you take it off of a lot of fish too. It's the exact same thing. I'm gonna finish taking the skin off the rest of these and I will meet you back in the kitchen at my parents' house. So see you then. And I didn't waste those skins I cut off for feeding them to the fish. Catfish are here already. All right guys, so we're at my parents' house and I'm getting ready to season up my lobster. Tonight I'm cooking on these cast iron skillets that we absolutely love using on the grill. And I have eight people, so I have eight cast iron pans. That way everyone gets their own individual pan. Here's my bag of lobster, beautiful white meat. Now the way that I skin them, they turn into two pieces, so each pan's gonna get two pieces. And I also have some avocado oil at the bottom of the pan already. So that's what you're seeing at the bottom of the pan is avocado oil. Okay, so the next thing I'm doing is I'm gonna pour in some wine. Normally I put on my seasonings, but I don't wanna wash my seasonings off the lobster. So I'm gonna start with some wine. This is a Chardonnay, and my big thing whenever I'm cooking is I want unoaked Chardonnay. Now, the thing with these cooking on these pans is if you don't have enough juice in there, they're gonna burn up. And you want juice, because I'm also gonna be cooking some rice, and you wanna be able to put your rice in there and sop up some of that great juice. So make sure you have enough juice in your pan. You don't want things to dry out. Better to have too much juice than not enough. All right, now we have four beautiful tomatoes sliced up that I'm going to put into these skillets. All right, now I have some white onions that I have sliced up that I'm also gonna put in here. You have to make sure that your onions are touching the skillet. You don't want them on top of the lobster or else they're not gonna cook good. But if they're on that skillet, they're gonna cook nice and get nice and brown. Now the next thing we're doing is we're doing seasonings. We're gonna do some pepper, salt, garlic powder, Tony's Creole seasoning. And lastly, we're gonna to top with some paprika. And now we're gonna do the exact same thing to all of them. Now I'm going to squeeze on some fresh lemon juice. Make sure you don't get any seeds in there. So the last thing we're doing is putting a lemon slice on top of all of them. And then topping it off with some butter. Thank you, 
kitchen. Alright, we got the grill pretty full. Time to go enjoy the duck poppers. Now I'm gonna close the grill and just let these cook. There's no flipping or anything to these. Alright, so we just finished eating our jalapeno duck poppers, where if you guys haven't seen that video yet, make sure you check it out. I'll have it linked down below. They were absolutely amazing. So, so good. And now, time to check on the lobsters. They've been on for about 10 minutes. Oh yeah, looking good. All the small ones are probably done, to be honest. So like I had said, the one thing with these is if you lose juice, you don't wanna lose juice because then you start burning things. You wanna keep the juice. These bigger ones, I'm gonna leave on the grill a little bit longer. They're not cooked all the way, but I'm gonna start taking off these smaller lobsters. The cool thing about these pans is they come with these little sleeves for the bottom, for the back of the skillet, and then their own individual pans, and everyone gets their own little skillet. So if you guys have been watching Brooks Kitchen Cooks for a while, You've probably seen these pans, these skillet cast iron things before. And this is such a neat way to eat fish, lobster. I never knew about them before I met Brooks family and seriously so good. Cause it, all the juices cook together. You retain a lot of juice. They get that um, nice caramelization from the cast iron. First lobster bite. Super tender, full of juice. Oh, thank you. Absolutely delicious and just simple, easy, and just great way to cook your lobster. Okay, we went and caught these like, um, oh, thanks, Thanksgiving morning, we went out and caught 11 lobsters. So, you know, duck poppers and lobsters, just catching things with my family and then sitting down with family and friends enjoying the things that we caught, very special to me. I, I just, I just absolutely love it. You're done already? Yep, it's hard not to leave anything on your plate oh when it's so gosh, good. Sure. All right. I, I took one bite so far. <laughs> it's already done, what'd you think, good? Oh yeah, real good. Super tender. I mean, the lobster is really good, but you, you took the red off, right? Right. I think that makes the biggest difference when it comes to lobster. I mean, preparing it directly, that makes makes it taste good, but that red, when you take it off, I think it helps people who don't like lobster really enjoy it. What do you think, Mama? I'm too busy eating to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> this is my mom's portion of the catch and cook, her famous pineapple upside down cake. Let's see it, Mom. This is the dangerous part. Mm. Yeah! <laughs> Perfection! Nice cake, Mom. Guess laugh. <laughs> I can't even read that. It's so 60. Like looks like an 80. <laughs> oh my gosh, it does look like an 80. Dad, that's an 80. No, it's not. It's not, but it looks like it. <laughs> From this one side. Side's, one side's flat and the other one isn't. So if anything, it's an 80. No, it's not. It's a six. <laughs> yeah, it's a six. It's a six. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear dad. Happy birthday to you. Well, we had an excellent dinner for my dad's birthday and we had a really, really awesome dive. Again, that was the most lobsters I had seen in a really long time. Not the most legal lobsters, but definitely the most small lobsters. Really awesome dive. Make sure you guys check out Fisher's video. He's already posted it. I will have it linked down below. And 
If you guys are interested in those pans, I'll also have them linked down below. I have nothing to do with the company, but we absolutely love those pans. We've been cooking on them for years and years. We used to use aluminum foil boats, and these cast iron skillets are way better. Love those. So I will have those down below too. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.